Hi everyone, my name is Grant K, and welcome to the fifth part of the video series on how to use Action, Autodesk Smoke's main 3D compositor. In the previous video, we looked at how we could move layers around in 3D space and actually create distances between them, which then gives us this extra added perspective. You could see this quite clearly when we move the camera around in 3D space. So now that you have the Action 3D Compositor fundamentals under your belt, you can now take those fundamentals and start exploring more creative options. I have set up the Action Compositor like we had in the previous videos. I have the split views so that the schematic is on the left and the composite is on the right. I also have set my composite to a duration of 50 frames and Auto Key is off. In the Setup menu, under the Rendering tab, Z Buffer is on and Shading is off. And finally, under the Preferences tab, Auto Image is turned off. Now let's start building this new motion graphic composite. In the Media menu, I have already loaded a gradient background in Media Entry 1 and a pattern element in Media Entry 2. We'll start off by selecting the gradient background in Media Entry 1 and double clicking on its thumbnail to add it into the composite as an image object. Now we've covered the schematic view in detail in a previous video, but there is one extra feature we should enable to make navigation of the schematic even easier. Select the schematic view on the left to activate it. To the right of the interface, we will find the View button just below the navigation controls. Upon entering the View menu, we will go all the way to the left of the interface. Firstly, we will see a button to display the navigator. When it is enabled, the navigator will appear in the schematic. It is important to have the schematic view active, otherwise the navigator would not appear. One last thing while we're here, the views in action can be set up to update individually when scrubbed or update all together. My preference is to always have everything update during tweaking. So with that said, we can set the view layout to update all. We can now press the Exit view to return back to the main action controls. When we double-click on the axis node of the gradient background, the object menu appears for the selected object. As a quick reminder, the axis menu to the left of the UI is for transformations. The image object menu on the right of the UI is for changes to the actual object surface which is composited in 3D space. So if we rotate the image object in 3D space by adjusting the Y rotation, you can see that this image object is a flat shape. We can undo this transformation by pressing Command Z on the keyboard or pressing the Undo button to the right of the interface. Now we have four different types of surfaces in action. We can expose them in the Image Object menu. They are Flat, Bilinear, Bicubic, and Extended Bicubic. The default surface is obviously flat. Bilinear surfaces are used for four-point tracking and corner pinning. Bicubic and Extended Bicubic allow us to bend this image object in 3D space. So we are going to bend the gradient background similar to the way you can bend a piece of cardboard. The whole point of doing something like this is that we're stretching the background out to create more perspective. This is much better than simply pushing a layer back in 3D space and making it huge. To do the job, we'll stick to using the bicubic surface. Holding down the Control hotkey on the keyboard, we can drag a marquee across the four inner tangents of the top and bottom edge of the background. 
To make this very clear, select the Action Schematic view and switch to the top view using either the hotkey Shift 4 or choose the pop-up menu at the bottom left of the interface and scroll all the way up to the top view. So we can use the navigation controls on the right of the interface to zoom the view out a bit. In the object menu, switch the image tab from surface to vertices. This vertices menu controls the transformations and animation of the selected tangents. So if we were to drag the Z position of the vertices back in 3D space, you can now see that the background is changing shape. I've heard someone refer to this as a cyclorama, but perhaps you have a different name. This is what will give you more range when moving the camera around and less black holes on the edge of the background. What we could also do is scale the background to be extra large. This is easily done in the Axis menu, and we can scale the background proportionately because the Proportionate button is enabled under the Scale sliders. To carry on adding to the look of the background, we have a pattern element we can use. Switching back to the Media list, we have a pattern element in Entry 2. Select the top view and press the Escape hotkey this will switch us back to the schematic view. Now we would like the new pattern to have exactly the same settings as the background image object. If I was to double click on this pattern thumbnail, we can see that we would have to go through the same process again to bend the object in 3D space. However, this is not necessary. Why would you want to repeat all the same steps again? Instead, we can delete the image object by dragging it off the schematic and do things differently. Everything that we need to do has already been done to the background image object. We'll simply make a duplicate of it and then replace the media. At the bottom right of the screen, change the selection mode from selected to branch. This means all the nodes connected to the branch are duplicated instead of just one at a time. Selecting the top axis of the background image object, we can now click the Copy button, which is located to the bottom right of the interface. Alternatively, you can press Ctrl-C on the keyboard to perform the same function. Now holding down the Option hotkey on the keyboard, we can click on the axis and move the branch to the side. Having a closer look at the nodes, we can see that Image Object 1 and Image Object 2 both have the same media entry coming from Entry 1. Select the Image Object number 2. In the Media list, we can select the pattern which exists in Entry 2. With both options selected, you can press the Apply button to the left of the Media list. Our pattern has now been replaced in the second image object. Now let's composite these two image objects together. Switch to the object menu and image object 2 should already be selected in the schematic. Under the image tab, you will have the blend modes that you should be familiar with from other design packages. We actually have a choice of using either flames blending modes or the Photoshop Blend Modes. In this case, we'll stick to the Flame Blend Modes and we'll switch the mode from Blend to Subtract. We'll also finish off by adjusting the transparency and now we've completed our background. Hopefully this video has shown you that everything we're doing is within a full 3D composite and everything is 3D. In the next video, we're going to do a bit of light shading as well as adding a Photoshop file into the composite with all of its layers intact. If you'd like to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. 
I hope you're enjoying your action experience and I'll see you again soon in the next video.